There's a program on BBC One called Panorama that aired recently that had a really cool scientific breakthrough when it came to communicating with people in a vegetative state. Now, for those who maybe aren't aware of what a vegetative state is, that's basically when someone is non-communicative or they don't respond to outside stimulus in a meaningful way. They're sort of summed up by the cliche, the lights are on but no one's at home. These people, uh, they're still conscious. They are awake, they sleep, they eat and do other things, but they can't really communicate with the outside world. It's usually a result of an intense brain trauma, usually in a car accident, most frequently. So there was a neuroscientist by the name of Professor Adrian Owen and uh, he's a British neuroscientist, but he was working with a team at uh, the University of Western Ontario. And what they devised was a method in which they could actually communicate with these people who otherwise had no real link to the outside world. And what they did is they would put these individuals in an fMRI machine and they would then prompt them to uh, imagine themselves in various circumstances. The two examples they used were playing a game of tennis, and the other example they used was walking through their house. And what these do is activate certain parts of the brain. Now, what's really interesting is when you visualize yourself, or not necessarily visualize, but imagine yourself doing something, it activates the regions of the brain that would come into play if you were actually doing it. So for the tennis example, it would activate the parietal lobe, which is involved in a lot of uh, movement and touch and something that would obviously come into play when in a game of tennis. So just imagining it will activate that region. And they found that uh, in a small percentage of vegetative state individuals, about 20% or so could successfully, at least it seemed to be, they would hear these, uh, these cues and they would imagine themselves in these circumstances and activate that region of their brain. So what uh, Professor Owen did next was then put them in, uh, they were still in the fMRI in uh, the next session, and then they would be asked questions. And for a yes, they would imagine themselves doing one thing, and for a no, they would imagine themselves doing something else. And what's so crucial about this is there are always so many questions we have uh, about individuals in these states, if they're, any, if they're in any pain or if they're forming new memories. And um, the results were really encouraging. Uh, one individual, Scott Routley, who is uh, a 39-year-old man, uh, they were successfully able to figure out that he was not in any pain. They would ask him, uh, are you in any pain? For yes, think of uh, walking through your house. For no, think of a game of tennis. And uh, he seemed to think of no. The fMRI scans were consistent of that. And that was a huge breakthrough right away. We were able to communicate with someone who otherwise had no real link to the outside world. What was even more impressive was uh, Stephen Graham, another uh, patient who uh, underwent the procedure. And they were able to uh, deduce that he had learned that his sister had given birth to a young girl about five years ago, that he was now an uncle. And this shows that even though he's in a state where he seems to be unengaged with the outside world, he still knows what's going on. He's still aware of his circumstances and he's able to form new memories, like the memory of his niece. And this is a really sort of small step and it's not really a new science. I mean, fMRIs have been around for a while, but it's a really cool application of that technology. And it could be a huge first step in sort of reaching into these mind, the minds of these people who are otherwise trapped by their circumstances. And uh, I wish it were easier to watch this program. Uh, it is on BBC World News, I believe. Uh, you might have to hunt for it because scheduling information is tough to come by, but this program was Panorama. I highly recommend seeking it out, and it's a really cool look at uh, some cutting-edge neuroscience.